Come on! I'm telling you, if you can't do this, get out of the business. The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life, it's episode 272, it is July 15th or 16th, depending on when this gets uploaded, of 2021. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things we can't talk about. That's right. Well, right before we were about to record here, late on Thursday afternoon, Bill Goldberg! The return of Bill Goldberg was reported by Fightful Select. Apparently, he's set to come back on WWE Raw on Monday, the first Raw back in front of fans. And he's going to feud with Bob Lashley over the WWE Championship at SummerSlam. How do you feel about this? Yeah, so... Like that, I think that makes uh, that makes a little more sense of of what the that promo was all about with Bob on on Monday night. We have to make him a killer again. Like he's he's dropping the the Ric Flair Horseman entourage, and now he's he's just going to be a badass again. Okay, that's fine. Why did he lose to friggin' Xavier Woods? I don't know. Maybe they forgot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think they they wanted to tell the story on one part of the show that he's that he's beatable because he has a match against a guy that nobody thinks is going to beat him. So you had to show you was beatable by instead of, instead of having Kofi beat him who has already beaten him this summer, but I assume Vince has forgotten that. Um, They had uh, his tag partner beat him. And then that is the linchpin is to the whole few or to the whole character changes he was so incensed at losing to uh not his opponent on sunday that uh that he is he's gonna be mad and, and mean again speculation also on the return of becky lynch apparently she's scheduled to be at money in the bank this weekend it's not necessarily indicative of anything given that she was also at the last wwe pay-per-view and has been folding around for several months now but probably a fairly good bet that she's back imminently as well. I said on this show, first segment of Friday Smackdown, the first show back with fans. Uh, I'm hitting her music and I'm having her come out to start to kick off the show. Uh, I think it's going to be Roman, but I think your idea is good too. (laughs) Yeah. I I think they're not going to go with my idea based on, the fact that they booked uh, Carmella versus uh, Bianca for this week's show. Yeah, no, I think I think we're we're waiting. I would honestly, and I know this is, I know people like surprises, and I'm not knocking that, but I do think both from a business standpoint, and also I think it would be cool because they don't do this very often uh, to do like a, a 2002 Triple H return for her where you hype it for like a month and you do video packages about, you know, highlights of her in-ring career and then highlights of her training to come back. And you just keep putting, you know, Becky Lynch back in four weeks, Becky Lynch back in three weeks, Becky Lynch back in two weeks until SummerSlam or whatever. And she has her match back and she beats somebody in five minutes. Like that idea too. Frankly, why haven't they been doing that for the last four weeks <laughs> <laughs> well yeah that is and obviously that all goes out the window if she just walks out on either a friday or sunday show but uh yeah. yeah i think that would have maybe been maybe been an idea yeah i like that idea i i do enjoy that idea well there is a pay-per-view this weekend it's money in the bank it's back in front of fans after the saturday show back in front of fans and before the monday show back in front of fans lots of talk about fans I don't know if this means anything for television viewership. People seem to think that AEW Dynamite did over a million viewers this week because it was in front of fans. Uh, I don't know how much stock to put in that. 
does being in front of fans mean anything to television viewership? I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I I think they're. I, it's really hard to say because obviously last week was AEW's first show in front of fans, and that one did not do as well as this week. Right. Now you can say people heard about it or saw clips online or whatever, and realize and people that don't follow it as religiously as as other people saw it. I'm like, oh wow, they're live. I'll, I'll I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna make sure I watch next week or whatever. So right. there could be that. Right. So it could be this SmackDown is more in line with what it has been doing and then next friday is but also i think wwe has done a pretty good job of hyping that this the show is is their first one in front of fans and trying to make that a big deal so yeah i mean i i think the fans are, are certainly part of why uh, the numbers are up but it's it's still kind of hard to gauge that stuff until we see like any any kind of pattern forming over the next couple of weeks i guess that's fair all right, set for the pay-per-view this weekend. AJ Styles and Omos versus the Viking Raiders for the Raw Tag Titles. That's certainly a match. Uh, Omos going to do a big boot. <laughs> Sidewalk re- slam. Yeah, he really doesn't have, you know, a wide arsenal. And not necessarily, you know, I don't want to see him do step up in Zaguri's, but <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's definitely only so much he could do. Uh, Edge is Edge is wrestling on SmackDown this week. He's teaming with Ray, uh, but he all, he's also re, uh, wrestling Roman on the pay per view. Clearly, just a setup guy for uh, apparently John Cena will work SummerSlam. So there you go. Yeah, I think he's you know Edge can pin Jim Uso or or whoever, and then to get you know set up the the match on Sunday, and then Roman will beat Edge again. Yes. Possibly with some interference from Seth, which they've basically told you was going to happen, as we talked about last week. Yes, and yes. Uh, and then and then yeah, Edge will move on to the Seth feud, and and Roman will have his his big time opponent for SummerSlam. Yeah, yep. It's probably an example of good booking. I'm just not used to that. <laughs> well, we were talking about this off the air last week, and you were like, "Wow, they just they're just beating Cesaro left and right now." Yeah, after yeah. his big push, and I was like, "Well, that's kind of like." what it was designed for right you gave him a big win or you gave him some big wins you beat brian beat seth on his way up right and then he lost to the world champion and now he's going back down and losing on his way back down that's kind of how they always used to do things up through like you know 1996 and then (laughs) since then it's been a little bit different yes it's been 25 years since i've seen good booking in wwe so i haven't (laughs) <laughs> I'm I'm not used to the concept, but yeah. Uh, Rhea Ripley versus Charlotte Flair for the Raw Women's Title in a few that's harmed both both uh, both performers, and hopefully because they don't want to beat either one of them, which is frankly a problem. Yeah, it's it's weird because you you would think they would they would be mad at Charlotte because of whatever happened at <laughs> WrestleMania, and so they'd want to teach her a lesson. But they also haven't beaten her very much. I mean, I think Asuka pinned her on Raw a month or two ago, but they haven't they haven't repeatedly beat her the way like Bailey has lost repeatedly clean to uh to Bianca before uh her injury, which happened like a couple of hours after we recorded last week, I think. Yes. Yes. Poor Bailey, you know? Yeah, it's like I mean I Everyone, that's what that was like the topic on I feel on social media the last week or so is who is the Thunderdome MVP? And I don't I don't know how you make an argument for anyone other than Bailey. I mean, MVP was really good. Um, you know, Orton worked very hard and some pretty, you know, he did good stuff with Drew and bad stuff with Bray, but worked very hard during all of it. But it's like it's it's Bailey. Like she was the most entertaining person on on her show for a year plus of no fans smackdowns yep she made herself a character she got herself a spot is how i've i'm obsessed with this analogy that i come up with that she didn't have a spot before the thunderdome era and then she worked herself into a spot and i'm talking about when they're writing a show they start with people that they want to put on the show first and then they work segments around them rather than (laughs) writing a bunch of segments and filling people in. It's like, she's going to be on the show because she's earned a spot on the show. So that, uh, 
Yeah, she definitely. And so then they they call up uh, Tegan Knox, Shotzi Blackheart, and they're giving Tony Storm vignettes. Uh, so to to so one Bailey goes down, and they need three talent from NXT to come up and replace her. Not complaining. All of those call ups are way overdue. Yeah, for sure. Um, poor Io Shirai still <laughs> still can't get out of the warehouse. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, all of those people are good. Tegan Knox is coming back from an injury, uh, and is uh, is good. And Shotzi is a superstar, and and Tony Storm has a lot of potential too. But hasn't really gotten to do much in NXT. She's she's been in <laughs> United States NXT for like a year now, and. Again, kind of, I guess, like we were just talking about Cesaro, they built her up for a title match. She lost, and then she hasn't been doing much since then. So, uh, yeah, that's, and I mean, that should be the litmus test. If you need people on the main show and, and Paul isn't even using them, then yeah, why aren't they? Why aren't they being called up? Nick, Nick and Vince had to go down to the <laughs> performance center and figure out who was at actually worth calling up because obviously Paul wasn't giving, wasn't giving him the, giving them the cream of the crop. And now they're, they're making their own decisions. Yeah, there is an element of that. So they finally decided to call up Aaliyah, I suppose, who has yeah. kind of been a running joke on this show that like she was ready four <laughs> years ago and then she wasn't ready and then she'll never be ready. And it's like now after like being a developmental <laughs> since, since the Nixon administration, she's finally getting her call up. Finally learned where that hard camera was. <laughs> it's, it can take a while. Ask, ask Finn Bauer. Finn told you, you know, it takes yeah. a while. It takes a while. Yeah, they're... <laughs> but yeah, they apparently traded. They did a trade where Mandy Rose is just suddenly on NXT now. And, and Aaliyah is on, is on Raw. Okay. I mean, Mandy never really got better. Like she reached a a plateau and then she actually kind of started to regress as a wrestler. And but like anything that gets you away from Dana Brooke as a character is like a pos- <laughs> is a positive. <laughs> well, that matching gear they got though. Like I I don't think that helped Mandy at all. I think I think they just like, what is wrong with Dana Brooke as a person? That, <laughs> that, that they, Definitely her fault, for sure. Right. That they've slotted her as, like, worse than a jobber. She's, she's below the level of a jobber in WWE. Like, who did she run the wrong way? Like, and she's been in that same spot for, like, four years. Right. There was a time when she was, like, earmarked to be a top star they put her with charlotte and all that right and then they decided she wasn't ready or something (laughs) and they have spent the last five years (laughs) just 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 heaping dirt on top of the grave like they they beat her and they beat her and they beat her and they beat her and they insinuate that she's dumb I mean, Titus yeah. Worldwide's the greatest thing that she ever did <laughs> as the quote unquote statistician for, for Titus Worldwide. And the rib and the rib was they they think she's dumb, so they made her the quote unquote statistician for this group, as if there's no way this person is smart enough for this job. Like her boyfriend died choking on food. Like mm-hmm. she's been through a lot of stuff (laughs) and they just they don't care they just beat her and beat her and beat her but like she's still employed which is maybe the most interesting part there is that yes because we just we've established that you know whether they like you whether they don't like you they just they'll cut anybody now and she's made it through several rounds of cuts i Mm -hmm. so maybe she doesn't maybe i guess she wasn't getting paid as much as maybe she re-signed before you know 2018 or whatever when they started giving everybody half a million dollar contracts or whatever but right 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 probably so they'll bet, they keep but, her around but you would think though that then her deal would be up maybe next year or something then. but yeah anyway poor dana brooke 
really sucks to be Dana Brooke is the point of all of this. <laughs> I guess. What do you make? A great oh, diatribe. Yeah. While we're on uh, while we're on the NXT subject, obviously Bronson Reed and Karrion Cross had a bunch of dark matches also. And as far as the women that had dark matches, they've all been called up. And as far as the NXT men that had dark matches, they <laughs> Karrion Cross did not drop the title to John Gargano this week. And Bronson Reed was like reintroduced into an NXT storyline. So do you think they've made the decision not to call up Bronson Reed and Karrion Cross? Well, it certainly seems that way. Although, again, I mean, they introduced Tegan Knox returning to NXT <laughs> two days before she showed up on SmackDown. <laughs> And Shotzi was, you know, what is in a tag team with Ember Moon on NXT and then suddenly was in a tag team with Tegan. So I don't think necessarily it's it's a one to one thing every week. But yeah, I mean, I would think if if he was earmarked to show up on SmackDown Friday or or Raw Monday, that they probably wouldn't be starting a feud with him and, and Adam Cole. So, yeah, I, I think for the time being, I think for whatever reason, they made the choice to uh have Karrion Cross not do his his wacky entrance and not have Scarlet with him when he did his main event match. And so he just kind of walks out there in his little skirt and <laughs> makes a mean face <laughs> yes. with like generic generic electric guitar music track number four playing. Right. Yes. And then he has like a match with Shelton Benjamin. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I could understand maybe why they weren't impressed. But again, I don't know why you would you wouldn't just do the things that you, unless they really just hate everything that Paul does in NXT, which again is my working theory. I mean, we have a lot of, we have a lot of evidence now that suggests that you're right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you... Every time, every time they watch NXT, Paul gets demoted a little bit more. <laughs> Imagine if you're Paul and like for 26 years, you've just been toiling and some might say scheming to one day rule the wrestling business. <laughs> and then this little fellow from CAA named Nick Khan, he's just a wee fella. He comes in and <laughs> ruins your life's work overnight and takes the place as the favorite son. Well, I mean, if nothing else, Hunter and uh, Shane will have something to talk about at Thanksgiving, huh? There is that also, Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Anyway, so we're halfway through our previewing Money in the Bank. Uh, Bobby Lashley will be wrestling <laughs> Kofi Kingston for the WWE title. I suppose the today's news of Goldberg coming back to wrestle Bob Lashley for the title at SummerSlam uh, probably spoils the finish of this one, unless they get mad that someone leaked that Goldberg's coming back and they go ahead and change the finish just to change the finish. Yeah, old Vince would do that. <laughs> but no, I th I think I think Bob's going to win and like I said I think that that turn on on the final segment of Raw on Monday was was not a go home promo for this show so much as it was a set up promo for the first show after this show, which is very bizarre given that there's <laughs> you could do that on the show after the show. <laughs> sure could. Could open Raw on yes. Monday with it if you want to. It's not like you have a shortage of time to fill on that program. <laughs> we got to do six weeks of angles in one night. Yes. Uh, Money in the Bank ladder match for the uh, shot at a, one of the women's titles. Asuka, Naomi, Alexa Bliss, Nikki, A-S-H, <laughs> Liv Morgan, Zelina Vega, Natalia, and just added Tamina. Who legend. boy. There's not one person that I think is favored to win this match. <laughs> could they beat I, everyone? I mean, it could be. You could one of these people could have an injury angle and you slot Becky Lynch or Sasha Banks in. Or possible. Or Tony the debuting Tony Storm or somebody. Possible. I mean, if if they don't do that, then uh, Alexa's gotta be the, the favorite. I haven't even looked at the uh, betting odds yet but i would assume that like she's the only one that's even pushed out of this group so yeah i it's 
the rest of that crew, it's like, yeah, Asuka was the champion for a year and they lost interest very quickly in her. <laughs> it's not going to be Naomi. Uh, <laughs> Nikki? I don't think they're that character at a champion level. Right? Liv? I mean, you could, but I I would need to see a substantiated more than <laughs> two-week push for Liv Morgan ever in her career for me to believe that they actually think anything of her. Sure. Zelina? Same brought thing. Her, <laughs> brought her back, beat her in her first match back. <laughs> right. She was a manager for her entire career before this. So yes. I don't... Na- I don't... N- Natty and Tamina. <laughs> yeah, I mean they they just started a program with with uh, with Shotzi and and we should note uh, it's just Knox now. By the way, it's not Tegan yes. Knox anymore. Yes. So I would assume neither of them are going to get a world title shot since they are uh, they just started a, a program for, and they're the tag champs. But honestly, why didn't they just put? Assuming the eighth person being Tamina doesn't get like written out. And they don't replace it with a new star or a turning star. Right. Um, why wouldn't you put like one of those two women in, in the spot since they just beat the tag champs? Doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? Other than Shotzi loves to jump off of high things. Oh man. Oh boy. I forgot. I watched. She, didn't she, uh, she and uh, somebody do a, did she and Ember do a ladder match with uh, Candace and Indy or somebody like that on NXT about two months ago? They, they did like a street fight, I think. Yeah, it was. There's a lot. There's definitely. A, yeah. Yes, 100%. Because I remember Shotzi doing a senton on a ladder or something, and uh, <laughs> she wasn't heavy enough to break the ladder. And so she and Candace, I think, just both like, bounced off the ladder as if it were a trampoline and landed on the floor. Oh man. I mean, it was a good match, but yeah, I, I worry about her, uh, Shotzi's long-term health jumping off of stuff. She might be the new, uh, Sabu analogy. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, she, yeah. might, she may have take, she might take that title from Sasha who generally just has good wrestling matches. Now okay. doesn't almost die in every one of her matches anymore. They told her to, someone told her to stop doing dives. <laughs> and frankly, <laughs> some of the be- best advice she ever got. What also helps that like now they treat her like a star and she gets to have long matches. So she's not trying to fit. Yes. A 15 minutes of spots into a six minute raw match. That also helps. Yes. Yes. But we digress yes. yet again. <laughs> yes. Yet again. Uh, men's money, the bank match, ricochet, John Morrison, <laughs> These guys are just going to wrestle each other on Raw every week now until the end of time. Match is entertaining, but, you know, I don't know. You want chocolate ice cream or vanilla ice cream every week? I don't know. Uh, sure. Riddle, Drew McIntyre, Biggie, Kevin Owens, Nakamura, and Seth Rollins wrestling for the Money in the Bank contract. Drew, I assume? God, I hope not. <laughs> Um, I know you're yeah, not a I fan mean, of Mr. Charisma. He's <laughs> it's Mr. Excitement. Uh, yes, he's uh, he's fine, um, but he was just world champion for a year, and I'm not chomping at the bit to see him move over to SmackDown and be that show's world champion for a year. So, uh, nor am I interested in seeing him retake the title on Raw. <laughs> so, uh, Biggie. They did, the thing, they did the thing on Talking Smack where Owen said, you know, tell Roman I'm coming for him when I win the briefcase, which isn't quite a guarantee I will win, babyface guarantee, but was something. Yeah. So, like, I think it's probably a SmackDown. Like, if it's not true, which obviously it's it's generally a safe bet to go with who's the biggest star in the match. Yes. Who's the most consistently <laughs> pushed person in this match. It's probably, it could very well be them. Um, R- Rollins, as far as like a storytelling device, Rollins isn't a bad choice. I mean, like I would always go with. So I would always use this match to make a star every year. But what the hell do I know? <laughs> <laughs> so like, who needs it the least? And you're probably like uh, Drew or Seth. And so like, who's gonna win it? Yeah, probably Drew or Seth. But is it like a storytelling device? Seth with the briefcase and like Roman as champion could make for some. uh fun storytelling if they want to 
tell some stories. Mm -hmm. And if maybe if Big Match John was going to beat Roman at SummerSlam, but he isn't going to be around after SummerSlam, Mm. you have Seth cash in and win the belt from him, and then John goes away until January or WrestleMania next year, whenever he has time to come back and and then he and Seth are a, a program or whatever heel could potentially win. This could be a program. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot. Of, that's why, like, I, th- I think I'm advocating for Seth to win this for, uh, for storytelling <laughs> reasons. You advocate for no new stars this year. <laughs> yes, that's correct. Uh, you would think like if they were ever going to do something with Big E, like how long ago now did they split up the new day a year ago? Oh, 10 the, months whatever ago. Whatever the draft was. Yeah. 10 months ago, I think it was the last week of September, first week of October. Mm-hmm. So 10 months ago now, they split up Big E to give him a big singles push. And he's feuded with a mildly racist Apollo Crews. And that's about it. Well, he was going to get in that big feud with uh, with Mr. Lore. But yes. then uh, then that that was cut short. But yeah, I I it does seem like they've already remembered that they don't see him as a top guy like and i've I've put him back in in the the do nothing mid card but yeah i mean that's it's i mean we talked about it last week riddle is on all over these shows every week and is pretty entertaining vince mcmahon clearly loves the guy he's an outside chance and then you could maybe do something with like him and orton and I don't know if you're going to break that duo up or like Orton's going to like encourage him to go for it. And it's going to be a big baby face thing. Or like he tries to cash it in and Orton screws him over. Like there's stuff you could do if you did, if you did it with Riddle. Yeah. I mean, you can make the case for a lot of the guys in the match, but I think like four of the eight guys. You can make <laughs> sure. All right. So that's money in the bank. And eh, there'll be a lot of talk about coming out of that show wonder how the crowd is going to react to all of Vince's stories now that they've gotten pretty much going to get to see them for the first time in over a year anything no I'm going to be going to be disgusted when Alexa Bliss's music hits (laughs) crowd just goes nuts Uh, (laughs) it's gonna be awful there was uh, an extreme rules show. I think it was one of the matches where Alexa like beat Bailey with a kendo stick for 26 minutes. And then <laughs> that, one, yes. Yeah, that happened here in Baltimore. And Alexa Bliss's music hit. And the pop that she got, the only way I can describe it is perverted. Like, it was I like that real I, guttural, like, yeah. Yes. Yes. I did not, I do not, d- did not trust anyone's intentions in the audience <laughs> that night. And it's only gotten worse now that they're portraying her as a child. Yes, it's, uh, yeah, it's it's gross and bad. Yeah, and it's been going on for quite some time now. So maybe the fans will revolt against something this weekend. They maybe. did boo when she showed up and black goo fell out of her face. And then Randy Orton RKO'd the clown and and won and then that was the end but they seemed more to be i think they cheered when she showed up and then booed when they realized all that was going to happen was that black stuff fell out of her crown and the clown stood there (laughs) i think i was like getting pizza or something during that match because i only saw like i don't know 10 seconds of it and i never went back and watched it again terrible terrible match all right, AEW Dynamite this week, as we mentioned, did over a million viewers. People seem to enjoy the show. What did you think of it? I thought it was all right. Yeah, so it's funny because, and we, <laughs> this happens a lot. I thought last <laughs> week's show was really good. I thought this sh- week's show was pretty good, but not as good. And so this week's show had a much higher viewership. Yes. And so it's a little bit of am I out of touch? Or the ch- is it is it the children who are wrong for me? Is it like we said? Is it just people are ne- are becoming more aware that you know they're doing full arena shows with fans again, and they're tuning in to see what's new after not watching regularly, or at least not watching live regularly? Who's to say? <laughs> I guess until we get quarter hours and we figure out like it was it an even bigger audience that tapered off or did they grow the audience all that stuff like we won't we don't necessarily know that but 
it was uh, that being said there was there was more good wrestling i think on this week's show than there was last week's um but the show i did not think flew flow did not flow as well as last week's show did and it was a very to the back you know every every match is over we get about four seconds of of celebration before Excalibur, Jim Ross is throwing us to our next video package type of thing. And screaming about how chaotic everything is. Yes. <laughs> it's JR's favorite word. It needs to be banned from his vocabulary. They need to uh, tie JR to his chair and shave the paintbrush off his face <laughs> as well. TV's a cosmetic business, man, and JR needs as much help as he can get in the cosmetic business. And I don't think having a big white paintbrush on his chin <laughs> really helps anything. But give him a bandana. He's a cowboy. <laughs> it's, it's the evolution of his cowboy, his cowboy character. Yes. It's time for the next step, which is a bandana covering most of his face. <laughs> He's now a bandito. <laughs> That's right. New ROH champion, by the way, bandito. Oh yeah. Yeah, they're they're doing shows in front of fans again. Cool. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Like there, that's man. We talk, we'll we'll get to New Japan in a minute. We as cold as we might feel, New Japan is at times. And look, and I know, like to their credit, they did like a bubble for all their tapings. Yeah, they had, to my knowledge, zero positive tests for with over a year of bubble. You know, tapings in front of no fans didn't bring even like limited fans back until this past weekend. So they did things right, but man, and and they have a fair amount of talented people, but then also like they got the meme wrestlers. Yes. <laughs> like Dan Housen is there. Yes. As like a regular character. And God bless the man, but that doesn't feel like what you would think the spirit of like Ring of Honor, like gritty, you know, work rate indie wrestling that wouldn't necessarily be a home for a guy like that, but Hey, times change. And peace PCO is still there. Like the, sure. the mutant zombie PCO guy who's 115 <laughs> years old. <laughs> the One of the right. Quebecers, like, you know, I don't want to, you know, I, whatever, whatever. Bandito's friggin' fantastic. Roosh. Oh, is, yeah. Roosh is great, but Bandito's on another level and, uh, Hey, good for him. But also, yeah. they have, also they have Mike Bennett, <laughs> Mike Bennett, Matt Taven. Uh, yeah. They're they're re, they're rebranding their women's thing because they're like, oh, maybe it was a bad idea to like build our women's division around the TNA beautiful people. Yes, and and so now we're <laughs> now they're trying to they're doing a tournament for that. So, yeah, I mean they're they're trying some stuff. Yeah, you know, and of course like the. The old stalwarts who have nowhere else to go, like like Galton Castle and and the Briscoes are still there, and and uh, yeah, like it's they're going along, they're chugging along. Yep, Jonathan Grasham, that guy's fantastic. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Well, one hundred percent. Anyway, all right. So uh, yeah, AEW uh, still building to Hangman and Omega slow burn for doing a ten man tag at some point in the future. They didn't. They forgot to announce when. But they announced that they're doing a ten man tag, <laughs> and uh, now you know women's title match next week on night two of Fighter Fest. Another U.S. title match. <laughs> Moxley and Lance Archer are running it back from the uh, the Tokyo Dome in 2020 on Dynamite next week. They're doing some stuff. They're just they're chugging. They're also chugging along. Their next big show is in six weeks, though. So we'll see. Yeah, and like. We got we we have some building blocks, right? We can assume Kenny and Hangman is the main event of the pay per view. Yes, we can assume we're gonna probably hold off for Cody and Malachi Black until then. So that's another match for the pay per view. Yes, I don't think it's and based on what the stipulation is for the ten man tag, two members of the Dark Order. I assume if he's healthy, it'll be Silver and and Reynolds against the Young Bucks. Mm-hmm. so there's there's three matches like but then you're like what is moxley doing on this show what is your biggest star doing on this show <laughs> yes like he's just kind of wrestling guys week to week i mean you could put him and eddie in a match but it doesn't doesn't feel like there's a clear direction there andrade was calling out the death triangle so it seems like maybe they're moving pentagon and 
I would assume since he called out the group, that means they think they can get Pac back into the country or at least <laughs> or Phoenix is maybe going to come back. I don't know. Phoenix isn't going to be hurt. Right. So uh, so that's that's that tied up. So it's like, well, who's, who's, le- I, who's left for Moxley to wrestle? Like, or even him and Eddie as a team to wrestle for, for their, their big, you know, full arena pay-per-view comeback. I don't know, especially since the inner circle and the pinnacle are still just going to wrestle each other until the end of time. Yeah, that's true. They really are holding off on doing this proud and powerful FDR two on two. Um, So, Mm -hmm. and then of course the Jericho and MJF match. There's another, right. That's another match for the pay-per-view you would assume. Yeah. So they're making Jericho run like some kind of gauntlet five week gauntlet or something. It's got to wrestle Sean Jericho and Sean Spears. You're going to wrestle on dynamite next week. And boy, it'll be chaotic. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah. I mean, so I think that's now that I'm thinking about it more out loud, uh, not so much this week's show, but as (laughs) at where they're going, going forward, I can see a lot of the pieces falling into place, which is good because sometimes they don't start the build for their (laughs) pay-per-views until like three weeks out. That's true. So it's good. It's good that we can see a lot of the pieces falling into place now. I'll give them credit for that. But you do wonder where that leaves. I think Moxley, who's, yeah. I mean, you, unless you're, you've got somebody coming in to to wrestle him. God, we don't need anybody else to come in. <laughs> but I mean, I'm not necessarily a, a new star, but like a new Japan guy or somebody is coming in. I mean, yeah, that 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 makes sense. Now that you've laid out like everybody's pretty much spoken for, yeah, that makes sense. I don't have a, I don't have an objection to that either. It's just like, but like we're just doing, we're just doing dream team stuff now. Like, I, I, okay, all right. Uh, I look this this product is not for me. That's fine. <laughs> there are a lot of people that enjoy it. There are over a million people that watched the program last night. I'm. Clearly out of touch when it comes to AEW because everyone loves it but me. So I am fine with <laughs> I'm fine with John Moxley not having something to do. I'm fine with having a, someone from New Japan come in to wrestle him. I'm fine with all of it. The only other thing is like Britt, I assume, is gonna run through Nyla Rose next week. So then what's she doing for the pay-per-view? Yeah, that I you have Riho, you have Yuka Sakazaki, who they just brought back for TV. You have Serena Deeb. Like, you have women that she hasn't wrestled yet. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, none of them necessarily feel like they're being, other than because Yuka happened to have a match on Dynamite this week, like, I wouldn't say any of them feel like they're being built for a title match. You know... Did I ever tell you about wanting to send someone there a message about? <laughs> I think I did. <laughs> I wanted. Oh, to... right. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to tell them to. I, they, I think they're so clueless when it comes to booking their women's division and scouting and signing talent for the women's division that I wanted to use my contacts with someone that works there and say, look. You gotta hire Ruby. I guess she's going by Ruby Soho now. You gotta hire her. <laughs> you gotta push her because they clearly don't know what they're doing. But anyway, you pointed out to me off the air, Yuka Takazaki. They did a story like a year and a half ago where Britt Baker like knocked her front teeth out, and um, didn't mention that at all on TV this week. But they can mention it if they want her to face Britt at some point. Yeah, no, that's that's an option. Yeah, I I had kind of forgotten that there were some some free agents coming due, so that's always an option too. But yeah, I I does not feel again like for for all of the the good stuff they're doing right now, it seems like there are two pretty big building block pieces in Moxley and Britt who just have nothing going on right now beyond like a week to week thing. So. That's fine. They got they got, they five got weeks. time to yeah. to your point. Yep. Yeah. All right. New Japan had uh, some shows. Uh, they're on the summer struggle bus. They had some shows this past week. They got some shows. This, they have a show this coming week. They have a bunch of shows next weekend. They're on like four straight days next weekend. 
Uh, Naito and Sonata won the tag titles. That's the big stuff. Uh, Naito is just tag guy now, I guess. Uh, obviously the best thing for him physically. <laughs> and yet somehow now that he's a tag guy, he's like main eventing two straight summer struggle shows next week. One against Tai Chi, one against Saber. They somehow managed to put him in singles matches in the main event of two shows now that he's a tag guy. But very delicate kind of dance they're doing with <laughs> Tetsuya Naito, who physically his best days are well past him, but is still very over. Always a tough thing to face someone down <laughs> without phasing them out. Yeah, so it's interesting because, it, especially I think because they've slotted him with Sonata, because those were like, if and you would have thought maybe even a year ago, if they were slot, if anyone was going to be the next top guy in in Lij, it was Sonata, right? Was, yes, you've been hearing that for for eight years now that yes. he was he was it's just a matter of time. He's on his way up. It's it's, yes. it's he's the Matt Morgan of of New Japan Pro Wrestling. <laughs> yes. Um, and then here comes Shingo being just by virtue of being the best wrestler on God's green earth, maybe in the last year, at least, uh, he kind of moved and Naito being banged up managed to sort of jump both of them. Yep. (laughs) Not only to get himself to a heavyweight, uh, spot, but to get him to be the world (laughs) champion and obviously injuries happened and and everything but he sees that moment and it's like yeah they didn't they didn't go to Naito they didn't go to Sonata they went to the guy like two rungs below them in theoretically at least and that I think says one thing about how really really great and how well Shingo has done and how well he's excelled when given chances but also it's like yeah, now these two, the the top guy and the guy who's supposed to be the next top guy have both been lapped here. Yeah. Yep. I, I mean, like, no one books as if it's a pure sport, and uh, there's really no American equivalent I can draw to <laughs> what this would be, <laughs> except maybe, I don't know, when, like, Lex Luger and Davey Boy Smith were in a tag team together in the WWF. <laughs> It's the out the allied powers or whatever. <laughs> like, yeah, I guess maybe that's the closest thing I can come up with. It, yeah, but uh, Okada and Cobb in a singles at the Tokyo Dome in about ten days here. Shingo and Ibushi for the world title. Uh, Tanahashi's wrestling Kenta and Evil's wrestling Ishi on one of the Summer Struggle shows. So they have a million matches coming. Sonata and, and Naito will be defending against Taichi and Saber at the Tokyo Dome. There's Desperado against Robbie Eagles at the Tokyo Dome. Tokyo Dome. Really, I guess the only guy not accounted for in any of this is Jay White, who has been advertised for their Los Angeles show in August. But basically, we haven't seen Jay White in two months since he got got sick with COVID. So that's troubling. Yeah, I mean, at this point, you think it's he just doesn't want to try to get back in the country and get stuck there. I thought he was when he first got sick. He was at the he was living at the New Japan Dojo. Like, like mm-hmm. they cut a deal with the government where the, he could stay at the dojo instead of uh, being quarantined at, at a hotel or something. So I don't know if he's since flown flown home or not. I don't know what the deal is, but yeah, that could be it. Yeah, that was, I mean, because honestly, as we've been talking here, I was like, maybe they're going to do him and Moxley for the U.S. title. I thought that would be the, what you call it, uh, New Japan Los Angeles match, but it's, ah. possible, it's possible they could redo it two weeks later in uh, Chicago as well. I mean, it's hmm. only, there's only two weeks apart there. Right. Okay. So yeah, that's maybe that's that's that not necessarily the move there. But yeah, that's that is fascinating though because yeah, you would think they would at least be talking about <laughs> he's, why he's not around. He's got one of the titles too. He's the never champ. He's the never champion. Right. He's wrestling Finlay <laughs> on on one of those shows. Right. 
Right. On All the right. That's the that's the um that's the Los Angeles match. It's fin- Finley and White. So right. It's okay. not yeah, for the Never title. So it's not Moxley on that show. So Moxley's going to wrestle somebody else. That's fine. All right. So we've covered New Japan, we've covered AEW, we've covered everything about WWE in the last 26 years. Is there anything else that you'd like to discuss? I mean, gosh, we even worked in Ring of Honor talk, for God's sake. It's probably been like over 100 episodes since that's happened. So, yeah, I think we uh, we have covered quite a bit of well, ground. Uh, it's the lo- first time we've talked about Michael uh, Ring of Honor since Michael Elgin worked there. And we'd just like to... <laughs> Michael Elgin was arrested this week. So, go back to like episode, I don't know, 20 or something, and you'll hear us talking about how stupid Michael Elgin is. And... As you pointed out to me privately, it's not as though we knew that he was also a bad person all that time ago. We just thought he was stupid. Well, as it turns out, you can be stupid and a bad person. So hooray for Michael Elgin being arrested. Yes. Good thing. Good thing when bad people have uh, bad things happen to them. So, yeah. Yeah. Good times. All right, pal. Well, uh, until next time, I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Adios. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. Sorry, I'm going to stop burping, I promise. I hope, you know? Like, I don't mind, but... We're all mute, like one or the other. Okay, cool. I try to keep on keeping on.